Hey everyone, nutrients can often seem like the hardest part of growing hydroponically. So today we're going to go over our what we do to manage our nutrients and show you what we think is a pretty simple way of managing nutrients. We have a two to three week cycle for managing our nutrients. So at the beginning of the cycle, we'll drain out some of the old nutrient solution and then we'll add in new fresh water and new nutrients. Then after a week or so after the lettuce has absorbed some of the nutrients, then we'll add more to replace what has been lost. And then after two or three weeks, we'll start the cycle over. If you had, we've got a lot of plants growing from one reservoir. So if you had fewer plants coming from the same reservoir, you could probably go a little bit longer on the cycle, up to a month or maybe a little bit more. For the drain and fill, First, we turn off the pumps that are circulating water through the hydroponic system so that the water comes back down into the reservoir. Then we take a pump similar to the one that we use to pump water through the system and we just put it in the reservoir. Submerge it and then use that to pump the water out into a bucket. For refilling the reservoir, rainwater definitely works best for a couple reasons. One, it's free. Two, it has a low pH. And three, it doesn't have any chemical additives like um, tap water often does. So what we do is we just catch rainwater off of our roof into an old tote. I'm sure there are more elegant solutions out there, but for us, this has been working great. And then we use just like a four gallon um, bucket with a handle to transport the water. So yesterday it just rained and it's decently warm out so this this works out. And grab some water and bring it in. If we can't use rainwater either because it's too cold outside in the winter here or if it hasn't rained in a while or whatever then we just use tap water. And tap water has worked pretty well for us. The thing we do to help treat it is we add this aquasafe, which you may recognize if you have a fish tank, this just neutralizes the chlorine that's in the tap water. If you had a well, then it may be different. You'd have to see how your water worked. So we just go ahead and add a little of this as we're filling up the bucket. And then everything else is the same as if you were just using rainwater. So once you have your bucket of fresh water, then the next step is to add nutrients. We like to use master blend nutrients, which is a three part mix in nutrient dry. And the way it works is you mix in one at a time and let them dissolve. So you'll start with the main master blend um, nutrient, then you'll add Epsom salt, and then you'll add calcium nitrate and let it dissolve in between each one. So I've already added this one before we started the video. So next I'll add the Epsom salt. And it has the recipe for these nutrients right on the bag, so you can use that. For this nutrient, you need to add two teaspoons for every five gallons. And it looks like I'm going to need about 20 gallons to fill up my reservoir, so I'm just going to multiply this recipe by four. So that'll be just shy of three tablespoons of each um, nutrient. So I'm going to add the Epsom salt. And I like to add it straight to the bucket before I pour it into the reservoir. It's just a little easier that way. And then that gives it a chance to dissolve. And I'll add all the entire amount of what I'm, of each nutrient into the bucket before I put it in. And then it will fully dissolve once it's in the reservoir. So I did that with the Epsom. Epsom salt and then I would do the same thing with the calcium nitrate. Once the nutrient has dissolved then you can dump the bucket right into the reservoir. At this point I would then go and refill the bucket, put in any more nutrients if there's more to be added, and then do the same thing until the reservoir is filled. In between drain and fills in the middle of the cycle, after say a week or so, you may notice that your reservoir is going down as the plants are pulling nutrient solution into the leaves. So 
what we do then is we just add a little bit to replace what has been taken up. So we'll fill up a bucket and then put in nutrients just like we do on the drain and fill, except in this case we're not actually draining anything out. Um, one thing that could make it a little easier, we've used liquid nutrients for this step because those are just easier to quick put in a little bit when you put in water to replace um, what's been taken. But you can use the regular mix-in dry nutrients also. Two things we haven't touched on are measuring nutrients and measuring the pH. So there are gadgets that you can buy just like this that will measure the um, electrical conductivity of the water of your nutrient solution and from that can make an estimate of how many um, what the nutrient level is in your nutrient solution. We've used these and they can be helpful but we found that if you just follow the recipe on the bag when you're doing the nutrients and you're doing regular drain and fills that these may not be necessary. So I'd recommend if you want to save money just start out trying with the nutrients following the recipe if you run into trouble, then you could start to experiment with um, devices like this. But if you want to keep it simple, then just start out by following the nutrient recipe. And pH is pretty similar. There are products you can buy to test your pH, the pH of your nutrient solution, and then adjust it. But we found that without changing the pH of our water, it's worked really well for growing lettuce both the rainwater, which should always be pH neutral, and then the tap water as well seems to work well. Um, adding nutrients actually lowers the pH, which generally helps lettuce. So I'd say if you're just starting out and you're just trying to grow food for your family and you don't want to spend a bunch of time tinkering, then just try the water that you have and see how it works. If you run into trouble where the leaves start turning a little bit brown on the tips or things like that, then you could look into products that measure or change the pH of your nutrient solution. But I say start simple. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about how to build your own hydroponic system, you should check out our website, which we'll have linked in the description below.